Let's be clear from the off. I'm not calling the Buddha a fool. If you saw the title and thought to instantly dislike this video and leave some hate in the comments, please bear with me. I do have a point with this and well, if after watching this you still feel the same, then have at it. Actually, this video is one that I've had in mind for a while, but I wasn't sure how to progress it as I couldn't think of an example for us to learn from that I felt was capable of really hitting home the message. It's only while I was looking into Buddhist teachings as my head was in something else that I thought of the Buddha, someone whose teachings I revere and appreciate, helping me journey through life in a way that seems correct, relevant and meaningful. Rather, the focus in this video is actually based on a quote from Carl Jung, which is, there is no linear evolution, there is only circumambulation of the self. Uniform development exists, at most, only at the beginning. Later, everything points towards the centre. Jordan Peterson has a great talk on the subject of circumambulation where he says, if you aren't willing to be the fool, you can't be the master. Hence the title for this video being to embrace the fool. It could be to go from being unknown or raw to becoming skilled and knowledgeable, and thus from a fool to a master. So where does the Buddha come into this? Well, the life story of Siddhartha Gautam, who eventually became the Buddha in his life, was anything but a straight path. And that's where my focus will lie. To put it simply, before we delve deeper, if you want to do something meaningful in life, you have to accept that when you begin, you will play the fool, or at least someone that's lacking knowledge and skill, which develops over time through education and experience. Exactly how Siddhartha Gautam went from being a naive prince to becoming the Buddha. You yourself must strive, the Buddhas only point the way. Siddhartha Gautam's life started out as one full of abundance, as he was a prince in a kingdom, with Brahmin priests telling his father before his birth that he would grow up to be a great sage or monarch. His father wished him to continue his path, one as the ruler of the kingdom. Therefore, to prevent him being tempted down the road to becoming an ascetic, he lived a sheltered life in his formative years where he'd have all the material wealth one could wish for, but had to remain within the castle walls. However, for all he had, Siddharth couldn't accept his place, feeling compelled to see what was beyond what he knew and how the world was. And it's here that we get our first insight into our journey in life, that often where we begin our journey comes from within. We may not know or understand why it is we feel the way we do, but know that if we don't pursue it further, then we'll have a sense of emptiness inside. This is exactly where Siddharth began. Chaos is inherent in all compounded things. Strive on with diligence. So when Siddharth acted upon his feelings, he left the castle walls in which he grew up in for the first time, in what was to become a life-changing event for him. On his journey, he came across a sick man, an old man and a corpse being carried to the burning grounds, which shocked him to his very core as he had never experienced any of these in his life. When it was explained that all beings are subject to sickness, age and death, he felt restless and truly dismayed. This is a critical moment in both Siddharth's life but also our own, as it's here we see the first example of what Jung speaks about when talking about circumambulation and our journey being anything but a straight line. Siddharth went to seek truth beyond that he knew and was shocked at what he found, which contradicted his very understanding of the world. The same goes for all of us as once we're compelled to start our own journey, what you'll often find is that there are roadblocks along the way, and more often than not, they cause setbacks for us, causing our progress to slow. However, just as these setbacks might challenge our perceptions of what we believe to be true, they are often equally important in aiding our growth. Just as seen with Siddharth, as it was his encounter with sickness, age and death that pushed him to leave the palace and his family to seek truth. What you are is what you have been, what you'll be is what you do now. 
So Siddharth left the palace, seeking to gain knowledge, understanding and most importantly, truth about the world and the meaning of our lives. It was during this time that he learnt about many practices, seeking to expand his mind and develop an understanding of how others practice their lives and reach fulfilment. He learned to meditate and practiced fasting, which was extreme and saw his body wasting away. While he'd learn, accept and appreciate what he was being taught, he couldn't find solace in remaining in this space and continued his journey forward. What's critical to understand in his journey at this point is that he maintained a growth mindset, seeking to learn and identify truth and while he accepted the path others had chosen, he acknowledged his wasn't the same. Not just that, but he suffered through this time too, which was equally important for his growth. We often see the same in our journeys in life too, and as we grow we stumble from one step to the next, sometimes taking steps sideways or backwards towards our goal. It's here we understand what it means to be the fool, we're not what we could be at this point, but equally everyone has to go through this phase, as nobody is born a master and nobody can instantly become one. If you find no one to support you on your spiritual path, walk alone. Siddharth had been journeying, learning, developing skills and experiencing the world, however, he was not yet to understand the truth about life. It was at this point that he sat under a bodhi tree and meditated, continuing for 6 days straight until finally he opened his eyes and found what it was that he sought, to reach enlightenment and at the age of 35, go from being Siddhartha Gautam to becoming the Buddha who would go on to change the world as prophesied by the Brahmins before his birth. As we journey from the role of the fool to the master, we'll often have a similar moment that strikes us. As quoted by the Buddha, drop by drop is the water pot filled, likewise, the wise man, gathering it little by little, fills himself with good. Meaning that despite him finding truth, what he sought was always within, and it was him practicing and growing little bit at a time that ultimately led to him becoming the Buddha. It wasn't instant, it was by learning, suffering and growing that he got there. It's the same for us, it'll be a moment of clarity and understanding that we're no longer playing the fool, but instead have become a master, as we put all that we have learned to practice and have the experience and knowledge behind us to fully comprehend what we're capable of. It's not a straight path, but it's a path that still reaches the destination in the end. However many holy words you read, however many you speak, what good will they do you if you do not act upon them? After reaching enlightenment, Buddha enjoyed the freedom and tranquility of liberation for 7 weeks. Actually, at first he had no inclination to speak about his realization, as he felt it would be too difficult for people to understand. However, it's said that the deity Brahm Sahampati requested that the Buddha teach, since there were those whose eyes were only a little clouded over, to which the Buddha agreed. And it's here that we learn the critical role of the master, that when you reach that point, share it with others, deliver value to help others in their own growth, teach them the meaning of what it is that you pursue to help give them direction, pass on the skills that you have learnt to aid them in their progression. When you're a master, you can seek to help others in their own lives, helping their journey from being the fool to becoming a master, after which they too can propagate the same. However, to begin your journey to becoming the master, you must first embrace the fool.
within the ocean of influence that the Buddha had, you can manage to positively influence just the volume of one droplet during your lifetime, then you've led a pretty phenomenal life, don't you agree? Let me know in the comments. Please like, share and subscribe as we help you live life on your terms. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to ensure YouTube notifies you of the latest uploads. Thanks for watching.